Welcome to the Author Alchemist Podcast. I'm here to make your writing magic happen. I'm going to teach you how to use your superpowers to ignite, inspire, and encourage your creativity so that you can turn lead into gold. Join me, Kim B. York, as I delve into the many mysteries of inspiration, motivation, and imagination. Welcome to the second episode of the Author Alchemist podcast. I am the Author Alchemist, Kim B. York, and I'm really excited about the fact that we're here at the second podcast which I know doesn't sound very impressive, but for me, represents a huge step forward in turning this business idea and this coaching creativity business thing into reality, and that is special to me. I'm glad y'all are here with me right now to celebrate that. Well, I'm celebrating. I hope you're celebrating. Let's jump right into it. (laughs) Today's alchemal lesson is about shame and the writer. Honestly, the subject of today's alchemal lesson, which is an essay written by Seanan McGuire from this past April, is one of the things that inspired me to start the author alchemist business. Because she really spoke to the heart of what I feel is something that's overlooked a lot of times when advice is given to writers. That is, there's so much advice out there about how to write and structure and character development and plot development and editing and self-editing and hiring an editor and all the technical details. You can find a book to help you with anything, right? Write a novel in a month. Yeah. The Chicago Manual of Style. You can find lots of tools. But how do you get the words out there? Right? You can't perfect something that doesn't exist. And this spoke to me because I spent many years not writing or fighting my urge to write because of shame and inhibitions and fears that nobody would read what I wrote and None of my work was to market or was literary enough or, well, you know, fill in the blank. There are a lot of reasons why. So Seanan McGuire wrote a essay called The Bodies of the Girls Who Made Me, Fanfic and the Modern World. It's a great essay. It was actually born out of a series of tweets that she sent out and then collated and rewrote into this essay I'll definitely have a link for it in the program notes here for this podcast because you really should read the whole thing. And honestly, you should read everything Shauna McGuire has written. Fabulous voice, fabulous perspective, interesting person, great stories. So that's a plug for Shauna McGuire. Just go read her stuff. This particular essay spoke to how fan fiction shaped McGuire as a person and as a writer which if you know anything about me, and you probably don't, but let me clue you in, spoiler, I am a huge fan of fan fiction. I read it, I write it, I like talking about it, I will share my favorite fan fictions with you, all you gotta do is ask. So fan fiction is important to me, not just as something I enjoy though, it is also something that played a huge role in my development as a writer. And apparently it did with Shannon too. And that's just fabulous. She definitely speaks about it more eloquently than I ever could. Let's get down to the bare bones of why I'm spending time on this one particular essay about fanfic and the modern world. And that is, it really addresses the idea of using fanfiction to bust down the walls of shame and embarrassment and inhibitions. I mean, there's a lot more to this essay, as I told you, but this is what we're going to be talking about today. So writer's shame, and I'm really speaking to the audience of uh, women here particularly, although I don't want to limit it to that because I know this can affect writers of all genders and ages 
and backgrounds. So take it with the lens that I'm wearing of me as a, as a woman and Shannon as a woman, but it can definitely apply to a lot of you, I think. That is when we were young or when we were younger writers, we were often accused of writing silly things, pointless things, things that were just, you know, selfish fantasy, self-insert stories, didn't have quality or depth, they were shallow. I mean, I could go on, you've heard them, you know exactly what I'm talking about, If you have dealt with this issue, uh, whatever version you had to deal with, you know exactly how much it hurts and how something like shame and fear and embarrassment, uh, those emotions will stop you dead in your tracks, especially accusations such as the Mary Sue self-insert accusation. And I'll be including uh, that as a link to the fan lore a wiki entry on it so that if you're not familiar with the word, you can become familiar with the word. Uh, you should, because I'll be talking about it again. I do have a whole podcast planned about Mary Sue and, and who she is and why she's important to us as writers. But back to the point is if something like the accusation of writing this self-insert fantasy, superhuman, perfect character, and that how that isn't valid, and we should be ashamed and embarrassed of that, stops writers, stops us just dead in our tracks. Why? I got to be honest with you. Look at James Bond, right? Perfect, super sexy, super competent spy dude. Yeah, so, you know, Anybody ever told them those movies are all full of unrealistic characters? Well, yes, yes, they have, but we also love those movies. So what is the what is the trade-off there? We're totally accepting of this super hot, super perfect-ish character that we all love because it's a great story. Told over and over again, it's a great story. Um, and I particularly remember being impressed by this double standard when I picked up a Clive Cussler novel and read about his perfect guy character who is handsome and rugged and extremely competent and and extremely sexy and had all the sexy women hanging off of him and saved the world regularly. And I realized, oh my gosh, this is just the prototype of every dude hero ever. And if you apply the same rules to a female character, then she's automatically considered unrealistic and foolish and idealized. And why are you writing something like that? Okay, so back to Shannon's essay and bringing fan fiction into the story here. And she called it the most rigorous writing school ever experienced by her. And I'm actually going to quote her on this because it reflects my experience with fan fiction and a lot of writers I know, especially the ones who've leaped out of fan fiction and into uh, a professional publishing career. Fanfic taught me pacing, taught me dialogue, taught me scene and structure and what to do when a deadline attacks. Fanfic taught me to take critique, to be edited, to collaborate, to write to spec. Fanfic made me. It's just a great quote, and it just and encapsulates everything I feel about the whole situation with where we are as writers who feel shame and what we can do to get over that. Because fanfiction is a safe space, and that is what Shannon gets to in her essay, that it's a supportive space. It's not full of insecure lit majors who are trying to tear each other down or impress the professor. No offense against lit majors. I know a lot of great lit majors, but it can be a cutthroat environment in those types of writing organizations or schools or groups. And fiction communities, on the other hand, generally tend to be very supportive. Are there fights? Are there disagreements? Is there toxicity? Absolutely. We're human. Okay, that's going to be everywhere. You find a way to escape that, you please let me know. But in fan fiction communities or fan fiction groups, 
where people are trying to write stories with ideas that they have about characters. It is just incredibly supportive. I can't even begin to describe it really in a way that, that brings truth to it that you would understand if you haven't been through it before. It's an environment and a genre style of writing that allows you to experiment, allows you to push the edges of your talent, and allows you to do things with characters that you're familiar with and comfortable with that you would never do with your own characters or your own ideas for fear of being criticized. In fan fiction, which is often usually anonymous, it's safe for people to take those risks. And I think that's why you get a lot of fan fiction that is honestly pretty terrible. And I don't think that's because it's all written by 14-year-old girls, like everybody wants to be smirch, 14-year-old girls for trying to write stories. I don't get that, but okay. Mm, I'm not on board with that one. But what I'm saying here is that you get a lot of people who aren't professional authors experimenting. They experiment with first person. They experiment with third person, even second person. You've got a lot of people experimenting with fantasy elements and science fiction tropes and romance genre style stories. Um, you know, the Hallmark AU alternative universe is a fun one that crops up where they take a, a standard char- group of characters and try to rewrite it to match a Hallmark movie plot. Lots of fun, very entertaining, and more challenging than you would think, honestly, especially if you've got a dark and gritty story. I mean, how are you going to do a Hallmark AU of, with Game of Thrones, right? If you can do that, then you are a talented writer. I don't care that it's fan fiction. You're amazing because I can't even imagine it. Fan fiction is a tool to overcome our fears and build our skills is something that is very important to me to promote and to encourage people to do. And Shannon makes such a fabulous argument for this about how important it was to her as a woman, as a writer, as somebody who is a fangirl, somebody who loves fan fiction and what it contributed to her as a professional writer. I mean, the real truth is the reputation of fan fiction out there is often used to shame female authors. But if you engage in writing at any level, especially in fan fiction, but in any community, writing community where you're sharing your triumphs and your trials and your experiments and your voice, it's going to make you who you are. It's going to encourage us and it's going to speed us along the arduous process of writing in a way that no amount of shame and criticism would ever accomplish. Those, those shut down creativity. Environments and groups and communities that support writing and encourage writers of all ages and all talents and all skill sets, that is what really pushes us to commit to sharing our words and telling the stories that we want to read. And so I salute Shannon, love what she wrote, support it 100%, would love everybody to go out and read it. So to wrap up, what's today's alchemal lesson? We are steeped in shame and inhibition from the time we're very young. And it's ongoing, and unfortunately it stops too many of us from reaching for our dreams and what we want to accomplish as writers. We don't deserve it. I'm going to repeat that. We do not deserve that. Whatever you use to get past those stumbling blocks, whether it's fan fiction or self-authoring, journaling, singing, I really don't care what it is. But whatever it is, it's valid. That practice is valid. You are valid as a writer. You always were. So get out there and write. Thanks for joining me on this second episode of the Author Alchemist podcast. Please drop by my website and sign up for the Bulletproof Writer course, which uses superhero metaphors to inspire you and motivate you to write. It's totally free. Just give me your email and I will get you started on that 14-day free course. I think you'll really love it. I think you'll benefit from it. 
I think you'll write a lot. Meantime, I do have a course that's coming up soon. It's not available yet, but Fan Fiction Academy, kind of flowing off the themes we've talked about here today of using fan fiction as a tool to inspire your writing and to get over your inhibitions and to expand your skills. That's going to be coming out pretty soon here. I'm really excited about that. So be on the lookout for that announcement. And if you happen to drop by iTunes or you're on Stitcher, if you go anywhere where this podcast is available, please consider rating it. Five stars would be awesome. I would love that if you could do that. But any rating helps me spread the word, let other writers know that this resource is out there. And also, of course, if you have any ideas or suggestions or feedbacks or things you want me to talk about, please feel free to comment or email me and I will do my best to answer all of that. So take care. Thank you for listening to the Author Alchemist podcast. I'm Kim New York, and I hope this episode has helped to clear away the cobwebs from your inspiration and given you the power to write the stories you want to read. For more podcasts and other tools, please visit my website at www.authoralchemist.com or email me at kimbu at authoralchemist.com. I'd love to read your questions and feedback. Now, it's time for us to get some writing done. Talk to y'all soon.